Okay, so with the JT Miller signing, the Vancouver Canucks pretty much only have one more contract that expires in the next season's worth of play that they need to pay attention to. And from the title, the thumbnail, you know who exactly it is we're talking about. We're talking about Bo. Because when it comes to the 2023-2024 offseason, everybody was talking about Miller and Bo. Miller and Bo, two centers on the team, two let's say top-of-the-line caliber guys on the team, and two players who were going to need some more money. Now, for Miller, we know what happened with him. He signed on till the books till 2030, making $8 million as an AAV. For Bo, at the time of recording this audio, he still does not have any contract. But, of course, he still has one year left on his current deal, wherein he's been making $5.5 million a season. Like Miller, Bo is in a position to re-sign and probably take a contract that takes him until the end of his Vancouver Canucks tenure. I mean, the guy's 27 years old right now. He's pretty much in the smack dab middle of his prime, and what exactly does that prime look like, you might ask? He had 52 points in 70 games played the most recent season. Now, sure, he has had seasons in the past where he's had more points than that. He's had seasons in the past where he's had more assists, too. But 31 goals in 70 games played is a very good number, and Bo absolutely turned it on this previous few years. Even in the bubble, he had 12 points in 17 games, and 10 of those points were goals. Bo absolutely turns it on when he needs to be turned... Okay, that's a terrible sentence. I'm not going to go out there and finish that thought. In the most dire of circumstances, Bo Horvat goes out there and he takes control. It's why he's the captain of the team. It's why he scored a boatload of important goals. And heading into the next few years, it's quite obvious the Vancouver Canucks are probably going to want to keep their captain. Which is why we're going over onto Spectre's Hockey of September 5th, because what Lyle Richardson did was he collabed a few articles published in the province, Vancouver Hockey Now, as well as what was said on Czech TV by Rick Dollywall as to the latest update to the Bo Horvat contract talks. Now, I kind of want to leave a link to each of the individual articles that we'll be talking about here, but I don't really think that's all too necessary since the Spectre's Hockey post has those same links included in their text over here. But pretty much, if you go over to the September 5 rumor mill, this is what Patrick Johnson says about the entire thing. PJ pointed out in a recent province article that JT Miller's seven-year contract extension with the Canucks raises a few questions for the club. Among them was what Miller's contract extension means for Bo Horvat. The 27-year-old Canucks captain is in the final year of his contract with an AAV of 5.5. He is slated to becoming a UFA next summer. Horvat can sign an extension now, but PJ wondered if the Canucks can afford to have him, Miller, and EP40 as their top three centers beyond this season. If an extension doesn't come soon, the trade watch will be on for Horvat, he writes. Now, before we go over onto what Simpson writes on Vancouver Hockey Now, this is a pretty interesting idea, just at a very baseline level, because at the end of the day, this is a really good center core the Vancouver Canucks have built up for themselves with these three guys. Miller, Petey, and Bo are all top six caliber centers. Petey, you could say, is talented enough to be a number one center. Miller had the point production of being justifyingly labeled as a top center. And Bo Horvat takes over so much in the postseason that you could say that by default, he could be the first line center too. These three guys, one, two, and three, are all talented. But the problem is, if you have one of these guys playing third-line center minutes, it makes things a little bit more complicated when you say, okay, well, who's gonna be the third guy? Who gets the least ice time of the bunch? Because, sure, on the first power play unit, they all play together, so that's cool. But when it comes to 5v5 play, do you want to say that Bo Horvat should be the third-line center because on the PK he makes up for that or whatever? PD is talented, Miller produces, Bo is a leader. Who exactly should be the third guy? Because sure as heck, the team is not going to go out there with Jason Dickinson as a third line guy. My gosh, that guy's not great. And so, the conversation as to where the team goes long term, because PD, of course, he's going to need the contract extension he's probably going to sign on after this season at a longer amount of time. Miller's on until 2030, and then Bo could get an extension too. There are some questions that are raised up as to whether or not that's the proper way to go about using the talent that you have, and if, PJ is saying, there isn't an extension for Bo soon, then, you know, the media is going to do its thing, and they're going to start the trade watch articles and speculation on Bo, because that's what the media does. On Vancouver Hockey Now, prior to Miller's resigning, Rob Simpson anticipated that Horvat could get between $6.25 million a season and 6.5 annually on his next contract, perhaps a little lower if he agrees to an eight-year extension. 
Following the news of Miller's new contract, though, Simpson felt Horvath could get between $6.5 and $7.25 million on a long-term extension instead. He speculated that the Canucks captain will likely be signed in September, or perhaps the Friday prior to the Canadian Thanksgiving weekend, given management's recent habit of re-signing a key player on the Friday before a holiday weekend. Wow, okay, what a... <laughs> what a weird pattern to go out there and acknowledge. Oh, did you know that the Vancouver Canucks make their important re-signings on Fridays that happen before holidays? That is so weird, but... Honestly, when it comes to Bo and that sort of cap hit, something in the 7-point-ish million dollar AV range, maybe 6.95, something like that, I don't know, just to be funny, 6.9, haha. But when you talk about a player who is as good as Bo, 5.5 is honestly somewhat of a steal already, so getting up to that 6.5, 7-ish territory isn't really the worst thing in the world that I feel could happen. I mean, you do the point production of Bo Horvat and his goals last season, 31, divided by 70, multiplied out by 82, I mean, Bo was on pace for 30 six goals on the year. I feel like 6.75-ish is fair for a 30-goal scorer that goes out there and does things as consistently as Bo does, so if he gets something in that sort of range, I would not complain in the slightest, especially if he signs on for, let's say, eight years, when the guy's gonna be 35 years old. If he takes a little bit more of a discount going that high, hey, maybe he goes for 6.5 or 6.3, then I feel like it would become a lot more stomachable to say, hey, Bo is that guy. He's taking a pay cut to stay in Vancouver, because for the next few years, he probably will be a little bit more valuable than 6.5-ish million dollars a season, especially if he's going out there scoring 35 goals every year. Now, he's only scored 30 goals once, so I don't want to make it seem like it's going to happen every year, but one can dream. He had 27 goals in 2018-19, so maybe this was a long time coming. Let's go back over onto Spectre's Hockey on the Spectre's Note part of the article. Canucks management has indicated they want to stock up on young, affordable talent. However, the recent signings of Miller and Besser show they also want to keep their roster core intact. According to Cap Friendly, the Canucks have over $68 million invested in 14 players for 2023 with Horvat, Hoaglander, and Dermott among their notable RFAs. Or, not RFAs, but just free agents. Resigning their captain will result in the Canucks making some cost-cutting decisions next summer. Check TV's Rick Dollywell reported that the Canucks president of hockey operations, Jim Rutherford, said that Miller's new contract will not impact Bo, adding that they would like to sign Horvat. We'll find out soon enough if the two sides can work out an extension before the trade season opens next month. Otherwise, his name could start surfacing in media trade gossip. And yeah, that's not really something that I think Canucks fans would appreciate circulating in the media because the JT Miller trade conversation persisted for an entire year, it felt. And guess where that led to them? Hey, he's signed again. So for Bo, I would like to not go down the entire trade conversation. If I had to guess, I'd place money on it or whatever. I'd probably say that Bo signs an extension soon and the Vancouver Canucks try to go out there and free up money in other ways because, of course, you know, OEL, Tyler Myers, you still have some other contracts that are pretty bad that are on this team. Jim Benning and co. really didn't give Alvin and Rutherford the best starting hand, I guess you could say. But for Bo, this should be a pretty easy decision. The guy's gonna stick around long term. It's Bo Horvat for crying out loud. This is what Elliot Friedman said in the latest edition of Donnie and Dolly. It's pretty quiet when it comes to the Canucks and the Horvat contract extension process, but it was also quiet with Miller as well. There is a little bit of a gap, but both sides want to get it done. And so, long term, we're not gonna see Bo Horvat leave. Right? Right? I don't know. Maybe because I'm a Canucks fan, I'm used to getting disappointed by my favorite hockey team, and I feel like until the dotted line is signed and it's complete and it's announced in the media and we're all kind of just sitting back and letting that news absorb into our bloodstream, I feel like until that happens, we're going to be a little bit antsy because, you know, Canucks fans, we're not used to having good things happen to our hockey team. So for Bo, I would assume there's going to be no trade. If there is a trade, though, then I hope the Canucks get a lot. But, like, if I had to place money on it, I'd say there's probably not going to be a trade. I hope that there are no problems with the contract negotiations that persist, and I just hope it gets done soon, because I don't want to go through an entire year speculating as to whether or not the Canucks captain is going to be traded. My goodness. Tell me in the comments, though, all your thoughts about Bo, whether or not keeping him or letting him go or trading him away is the right move. Okay, I think we could all agree. Letting Bo Horvat walk for free would be the absolute worst move possible in the entire multiverse worth of moves that you can make, but when it comes to staying or going, trading or keeping, extending or sending him away for prospects, talk to the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.